All right, hello, hello. If you can see me, let me know if I'm actually streaming, not just talking to myself. It's weird, I have uh, my phone here where I kind of like watch the chat and the stream, but it's, I think maybe like a 20 second delay or something like that. So I don't actually know if I'm speaking to myself or not. There I am. Look at me. All right, can everybody hear me? Somebody give me a thumbs up in the chat before I start monologuing here and breaking things. By the way, this is my Christmas sweater. We are uh, doing Christmas cookies at the office today. So this is, this is a Leanna original. So check this out. See? I am the, uh, the snowman. I've had this for a long time. It's always a treat to be able to wear it, especially on a day where I get to talk online. So good morning and good afternoon to everybody. Um, by the way, this is like my third stream, I think. So what do you all think of this? Is this cool? Did you go to the other ones? What's the format like? What types of things should we do? You know, I just, for me, I've been using this as a time where I'm already need to do something and I don't really know what I'm doing necessarily. So I'm just kind of finding my way through things. So let me know if that's useful or interesting. If you have other ideas for other streams, I could probably come up with something to do every week. Uh, but I want it to be valuable and interesting, not just everyone watching Ryan make uh, silly mistakes. All right. Awesome. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. I'm just kind of reading. Yeah, Ryan. Yeah, cool. You know, I feel like that same way sometimes when I watch other people code, just picking up little tips and tricks. My first job ever, my only real job ever, I was hired, I was probably 25. I was hired as the tech lead for a team and I'd only ever worked by myself in my basement. So suddenly I show up to this office and I'm the one in charge. I have five people uh, reporting to me. <laughs> and so I had never had that opportunity of watching other people work. So it was constantly, I would, watch someone else run a command from the command line and I'd be like, oh yeah, I, to I totally knew that command. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, git rebase, interactive dash I, like writing that down because I had no idea, I'd never seen that before. So, you know, fake it till you make it. And um, yeah, that was always really useful for me to watch the people that were my, um, my employees uh, basically teach me how to do stuff. All right, anyway, enough chatting. Uh, I think you're quiet-ish. Yeah, I was worried about that too. My, my gain, hold on, let me, let me mess with my gain here. All right, let me know if that's a little bit better. I'm supposed to really have this microphone on my face. I'm still learning too, doing some research. We're gonna up, upgrade my, uh, my recording studio. Usually when I record the screencast videos, I have a dedicated, I'm not doing video, so I have this microphone and I'm right on top of it like this. So the video is still a bit new for me. So we're gonna upgrade that keep thing, making things better and better. So let's do um, some Franken PHP. Not even really the main thing for Franken PHP because it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a way to basically like run your application. I, what I wanna do is um, use the new thing that Kevin talked about. This is his presentation from SymphonyCon. So full disclosure, I went to this talk and then something happened and I left halfway through and didn't actually get to any of the stuff at the end where he showed how to use it. So I am completely blind here and we're just gonna, we're just gonna see what happens. So first off, let's go to a directory here. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna create a totally new project for this. I'm gonna do this really quickly. Um, so my use case is we have a tutorial tool that we use internally. It's currently a command line tool called Tuts which is a cute name. And well, I'm not in a touch directory right now. But anyways, I can use Tuts to help me create tutorials. I, but what I wanna do in the next version of it um, is have it have a web interface. So it is a tool that I wanna run on my machine, uh, but I need a web interface. And as I interact with the web interface, it will actually be making changes to my command line. So it's not really a traditional website because uh, I need it to run on my machine, but being able to have something where I can just have a single binary I run it, it exposes the web interface, 
and I have everything all in one is really attractive to me, even if this is just an internal tool. So let's start a new project here. I'm gonna say Symphony New. Um, let's call it, well, let's just give it the right name. Uh, Tuts Hero. So Tuts, we actually call it Tuts Hero because it's our tutorial hero tool. And I think that's the command, right? So I'm gonna create this with the web app. That's gonna save me time. That's the, you know, the Symphony skeleton that comes with a bunch of extra stuff already pre-installed. We just two days ago uh, merged in Asset Mapper support. So this should give me, should, I haven't tried it, should give me Asset Mapper and Stimulus Bundle and Turbo all immediately. Well, let's see what happens here. Let's just open that in Peach Storm. There's my horrible desktop. Where are you, Peach Storm? You're asking me if I want to trust this project. There we go. Awesome. Cool. And yeah, cool. I have an assets directory. Awesome. And yeah, I think things are working. So I'm first, just to make this sure this is actually working, um, I'm going to just Symphony serve this. I have about uh, 40 different projects running on my computer right now, so I just make this port go one level higher every time. Awesome, cool. Hey, Symphony 7, woo! Wow, look at this, this is blurry down here. Well, that's a cool little effect. I think that's an accident, but that's kind of wild. Um, all right, let's create a page also. So at least we have something basic going on. So I'm gonna do a make controller. Uh, how about, um, whatever, main controller. It's a little early, not necessarily that creative. Awesome, there's main controller. Let's make that the home page, app home page. I'm gonna rename the template there to home page. And also, let me, new project, so I'm gonna make sure I have the Symphony plugin installed. I met the author of this plugin finally at SymphonyCon, which is really cool for me. It was honestly a bit like meeting a celebrity because this plugin has existed for 10 years and it makes the Symphony world work so much better. So he introduced himself after one of my talks and I was like almost a little starstruck. I was like, thank you so much for the work that you do. Um, this, he, he uh, the Symphony plugin does have an option for supporting it. Um, it's really cheap, so if you are able to do that, um, that's awesome. He um, releases almost everything open source anyway, um, but if you can support that, that's really cool. And let's see, I think I turned Copilot off also while I was recording yesterday, because it was annoying. So let me turn Copilot back on. Cool, homepage, we don't need the controller name, and let's just get this going. Awesome. Just put a div there. Just something so I have somewhat of a page. And I'm going to create a second page um, just so I can at least have a somewhat realistic app so we're linking back and forth. So I'm going to call this chapters because our tutorials have chapters. Not really going to be worrying too much about building my real app today. And let's copy and paste this down here. Chapters, that's totally spelled wrong. All right, no, I don't want that. Cool. And I'm gonna have an undefined variable in my other template, there we go. Awesome. And I know I don't have to, I'm just, a, I see the title block up there. I can't leave it to the way it was. I want it to be correct. All right, now, oh, beautiful. Okay, so first of all, that was really cool because I mean, I, I just nerd out on this stuff. The fact that that blue background is is there means that the CSS system is running um, and uh, stimulus is running and I'm pretty sure turbo is running. Actually, I wanted to create a link between these two and I'm getting the JS stuff running here because I'm going to need that. Copilot, cut it out, buddy. Jeez, I'm gonna need uh, assets for this, so I don't wanna just get um, our standalone binary working in an ugly way. I wanna make sure we actually are able to use assets and actually have a real web app. All right, so I'll link to chapters there, I'll link to the homepage there.
Cool. So now, look at that. We have a Ajax powered single page application. Click on that, no full page reloads. Woo! All out of the box. Love that that works. Okay, cool. So now that my application is clearly done and ready for production, let's try this Franken PHP stuff. So I am blind here. I purposely didn't do any homework. Um, Kevin Dungus was nice enough to uh, ping me and ask me if I needed any help, and he gave me, you know, he just gave me like one thing to watch out for. But um, but I'm going in completely blind here. So let's see here. So preparing your app. This is actually the one thing that Kevin told me is to make sure that we are, if we're packaging up our app, we need to make sure it's in uh, production mode. So app env equals uh, prod because otherwise you're gonna be running your app in dev mode. Maybe that causes problems, I don't know. Let's see here. So export the project to get rid of the git directory. Okay, well, I guess I should commit things first. Uh, I built the whole project. All right, so yeah, make dir tempter slash my prepared app. I'm guessing this, yeah, okay, cool. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. So tempter is gonna be something that already exists on my machine, because that's just a standard variable. So there's my very attractive looking temp, dir temp directory. So I'm gonna do this step by step instead of just copying the whole thing. So that should give me a new directory in my prepared app. And then this is a fancy way to basically looks like um, move all my code there minus my git directory. So let's do that. Awesome, that in theory worked. And then we're gonna move over to there. I'm gonna open a new tab for this just so I don't completely get out of my directory. So cool, yeah, so my app seems to be here. And actually, let's do that in a second. All right, so next up, I'm, I'll, I'll copy these two things. So we're gonna put our app into prod mode, debug equals zero. So I could edit that file by hand, right? But it's really nice to um, just be able to copy those and do that. And then delete my tests. Come on, Kevin, what are you thinking? I don't have tests in this app. All right, I will in the real app. We have lots of tests on our current tool. All right, then let's do composer install. And you see here it's dash dash no dev. So as Kevin just said, it's not really mandatory to be doing everything in the dev mode, but we are really, we're kind of deploying our app, I guess is the idea in a sense, we're deploying it to the single file. So just like when we deploy normally, you wouldn't need your dev dependencies. So we don't get the dev dependencies here. Um, oh, this is a new thing we added to the flex recipe also within the past week. When you install asset mapper, it adds, this is cool, this was Stoff's idea. When you install Asset Mapper, where is it? Haha, -ha. it adds this line here to your composer.json file. So it means that when you run composer install, it runs import map install for you. And so if you clone a repository and run composer install, then you're instantly going to also get your third party assets and assets vendor. So it's kind of cool, one less thing that you need to remember to do, it's just already there. All right, cool, and then, sure, let's dump the autoloader. Awesome. So presumably you can deploy with the tests if you want to run almost production tests as a, as a, uh, as a file check. Yeah, cool. That is a good idea. And let's think here. Oh, this is the tip that Kevin gave me is, at this point, we think, like, we, we think this is working, so Let's actually just spin up whatever your favorite web server is. And cool, actually make sure it's working. Ooh, but I am missing one thing. Because again, this is us deploying. So notice I don't have the blue background. I also don't have any of my JavaScript. Ah, And that's because I'm not running in the dev mode. So I need to run asset map compile. So that's specific to my application, which is why it's not in those installation instructions. So. Uh, it makes sense. The thinking is, whatever your deploy script is, run those deploy things here. So now, awesome. So now we got it. You can see um, Turbo is working because it's not re doing full page reloads. So I think we're good. This is going uh, very successfully. Ooh, what do we got here? The resource uh, app.css was preloaded using a link preload, but was not used within a few seconds. That is interesting. 
So this is not related to what we're doing, but with Asset Mapper, we send, with Asset Mapper and the web link component, we send a preload header that helps your browser download the CSS files even faster, which is really important because your CSS files are render blocking resources. So I actually just wrote a blog post about this yesterday. So if you wanna go deep, you can go to symphonycast.com slash blog. Um, but basically, when your browser starts reading your page, it doesn't know that it needs to download the CSS file until it hits this link tag right here. Now that's really early, right? You can see it doesn't have to go through a lot of my HTML before it hits this line right here. But as soon as it hits this line, it stops and it freezes the rendering of the page and waits to download that CSS file. So it's really important to tell our browser as early as possible that it needs to download this CSS file. So if you have Asset Mapper and you have the Symfony slash web link component, then your application is actually going to send a link header that advertises that the user needs to download that file even earlier. So down here I can, let's make this a little bigger. I can go to, this is the actual page. And on this page, if I go look at, here it is right here. So response header. So our app actually sent back this link header, which said, hey, by the way, there's this CSS file and you should probably um, download it as early as possible. Paul, really good question. The preload is something different than 103 early hints, I think. Kevin, you would be the best since you're here to answer that. The answer is yes, um, but I don't exactly know what the, what the real world differences would be because that's ultimately what we're trying to do here is hint. Now this link thing used to have this other thing attached to it called a server push, and that turned out to not be a great idea. So what we wanna do here is hint to the browser that it wants this asset, but not actually do a server push and push it. When actually the, I think Kevin's probably gonna answer this, but the 103 early hint, if I remember correctly, you can actually return a response with that 103 even before your response comes back. So Kevin, tell me if I'm totally full of garbage right now. Um, but I think with that, you're gonna be sending this even earlier. Um, like you could send this from your controller even before the rest of your response finishes sending. So it's like even better, um, but it's not supported by a lot of web servers, but it is supported by Frank and PHP. So anyway, this all came back to that warning that I got a second ago. I'm not really sure why I got that warning. I'm not getting it now. Um, but that was my browser's way of saying, um, hey, you told me to preload this CSS file and then we never needed it. Um, so that may have just been a result of me not having dumped the assets and then dumping the assets, something like that. All right. All right, so yeah, Kevin said, basically, Symphony now supports 103 responses, but to be useful, these responses must include link tags. The links must also be copied in the final response. Cool. Yeah, so Kevin, is it correct to say with the 103, and I might be using the wrong wording here, so you can correct me, we effectively are sending multiple responses from our app, because with the 103, in your controller, you can create that 103 response, which has that has that early hint that says, hey, you should download the app.css file. And you send that, and then you keep going and doing the work of actually building your page. Yeah, awesome, and Kevin says exactly. So what, what, a, what a time to be alive. We're, we're sending multiple responses from our Symphony app. Um, yeah, really, really cool. 103 is a temporary response. That is so cool. So you, you figured out, hey, you're gonna need this CSS file, so I'm gonna send it to you really early, and then and then you start downloading it while I finish building the rest of my page over here. Yeah, cool, yeah, then you do your slow work and you send the final response. And this is particularly important, again, with CSS files because those are render blocking resources. So we wanna give those to the user um, as quickly as possible. And this is the kind of thing you'll see, I know this is a total tangent, but if you're profiling your site with Lighthouse, uh, this is the kind of thing it will tell you. It'll say something, I can't remember what the category is, but it'll basically tell you, hey, um, there was, you know, app.css was a render blocking resource. You should tell us about it earlier. And that's what it wants you to do. It wants you to give it some sort of a hint 
like an early hint or a link header. So anyway, as the um, 103 gets um, more, it's more people use Frank and PHP or other servers that uh, support that 103. Um, I think that's something that will build more into Asset Mapper. Anyway, enough about that. So our app is ready. So let's actually get into it. So we have here creating a Linux binary. I am on Mac in case you notice. So I'm going to skip down here. I think that's the right thing. Let's see, Kevin says on FPM, no 103 responses will be sent, but the typical link header will be generated as a fallback in the final response. Yeah, cool. So basically like the link header is something that we're going to keep. And then if you support, um, if your web server supports 103, then you kind of get the 103 as a bonus because it's just even a little bit better. But if you don't have that, you have the fallback to the link header. Man, the internet is cool. All right, so let's do this. So, so I'm gonna git clone. I'm just blindly, I'm blindly following the instructions here. Yeah, move into the directory. And then here's the command here. Obviously I'm gonna need to change some things. All right, so I don't know if I was supposed to be in the directory when I did that. Probably not. Let's actually, let's, let me do that differently. I'm gonna open a new thing over here and do my git clone. Otherwise, I'm guessing Frank and PHP itself would be inside of my final app, which is just seems a little unnecessary. Boop. All right. So here's my command. Let's go to this spot here. So I'm going to grab my long path here. And let's just keep the PHP extensions for now. That's something that I would need to discover in my app to see what I actually need. I'm not, we don't even have a database. Um, by the way, SQLite is, um, my understanding is that's a really great choice for this situation. When you have a stand, I mean, SQLite is amazing. And so when you have a standalone application like this, you don't need a real database like um, Postgres. Um, and so SQLite, for example, I know is used a lot uh, in mobile apps. Um, where you just have a standalone application. So SQLite works awesome. So this is, my impression is this is not a an example default. This would actually be something that would be a good choice in your app. And, oh, hold on a second. What did I do wrong here? Uh-oh. Uh, um, um. So this is something that you would normally have in your Docker file with run. So what am I missing here? This is not, it's me, <laughs> remove run, okay. Oh, that makes sense. And then you're just saying um, embed, this is gonna be an environment variable, this is gonna be environment variable, and then you're running build static, yeah. So that was just a little copy and paste from the, um, from if you put this inside of a Docker file, which is something that Kevin talks about in his presentation down towards the end, because I did look through this. There we go. So yeah, if you wanted to wrap all, even the building of this into a Docker file, then this is kind of an example of doing that. So you're grabbing, grabbing this and, and down here was where you have that run. That's okay, Kevin. We do lots of copy and paste. This part of the reason we did this is to see, you know, what, what works, what doesn't work. So far, every single command has worked perfectly. So you write better documentation than I do. All right, cool. So now it's doing lots of impressive looking things. Ooh. Okay, it's updating my brew. Exciting. So that's actually what's going on right now. Oh, no, I did Matthias, I think. Yeah. To the path to the... Oh, no, uh, did I not? Oh, you're right. I totally, when I, when I copy and pasted that command the second time, I did not use the right command. Well, we'll just let this explode then. We'll see what happens when you run this command and you give it a totally bogus directory. It'll get all this work out of the way anyway. Exactly, now you saw that, now I can get uh, my coffee. I did, a, um, I did a terrible office sin right before. I had one minute until the stream was starting. And so I went and filled up my coffee. And as I did it, I took the last bit of the coffee and then I ran away. I didn't make fresh coffee feel really bad about that. But I had to come here. So I was the bad office person. 
By the way, while we're waiting for this, um, well, I don't want to look at that. Um, I discovered something yesterday. I tweeted about it. It's about it's about Turbo. So I know this is not supposed to be about Turbo, but I'm obsessed with Turbo, and and this is working anyway. So we'll we'll go back and check on that in a second. So uh, it was about Turbo Streams. This was my big discovery yesterday, and then it's all I could think about all night. So Turbo Streams, uh, Turbo Hotwired Dev. There we go. So Turbo Streams is this idea where, it, like, from your controller, instead of returning a real page, you can return weird things that look like this, and then they're directives for updating different parts of your page. So this says, up uh, find an uh find the element whose ID is messages and append this content. So effectively in your controller, if you imagine that this was processing a form, you, you know, you do like if form arrow is valid, whatever. And then effectively right here, you would return a turbo stream. You'd actually return something that looks like this. So your response would contain something like this. There's more details to what it looks like, but you don't return a full HTML page. You just return a turbo stream. So what I didn't know is that you don't have to, if you want to use turbo streams, you don't have to return them as their own response. You can just pop them onto the page wherever you want. So let's, let's actually try this. I'm going to say ID equals, um, oh, I don't even need that. It's an H1. So let's, let's I, I haven't actually tried this yet. So this is, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you how awesome this is and then I'm, I'm going to crash and burn. So let's just see here. I'm gonna pretend, I'm just gonna hack in a turbo stream right into my page here. So let me go over here. I'm gonna write it over here just so I can get it right. So we're gonna say targets equals, cause then you can use a CSS selector. So I'll just find the H1. We're gonna append to it, you know, a little, uh, there we go. Thanks AI. Oh, thanks. My scarf. My whole my whole uh, Christmas costume here. All right, so I'm just going to paste this in here. I, again, I haven't tried this, so I have high hopes. I thought about this all night. Um, and what I expect to happen is, what I didn't realize you could do until yesterday, and what I'm pretty sure will happen, is the instant that this pops onto the page, it's actually going to parse this, and it's going to append this content to my H1, and it works. Woo! So tur I know, if you use Turbo a lot, then maybe you're excited. If you don't, maybe you don't know why this is so cool. Um, but it means that if you wanna use Turbo Streams, you don't need to create an entire Turbo Stream response. You could have a normal response, like if you're using a Turbo Frame, you could just return your Turbo Frame like normal, but then inside of that Turbo Frame, you could sneak in some of these Turbo Stream elements and update other parts of your page, like update your toast container or update some counter that's in your header. Um, so anyways, that was my realization yesterday. And awesome, now it's totally broken because I, well, let's see, is this because of my bad argument? Well, let's, let's, well, let's run it again with the correct argument here. So I'm gonna go back to this. So I think the error may have been something related to brew. There we go. Ooh. Kevin, this is fancy. I like this. So um, yeah, do you wanna fix this? Yeah, that error did look related to my homebrew, but it seemed to be fine now. Man, look at that. Is this the, I know this is written in Go, but is this the kind of fancy stuff we're gonna be building soon with the, the terminal component from Symfony? I hope so, because this is, this is awesome. I want Maker Bundle to look cool like this. All right, so yeah, let's install that. Okay, so now my homebrew is causing problems. I don't want homebrew to be the problem here. Uh, 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 let's see here. What is the problem? Wrong number of arguments given. All right, this is where we get. This is where this is where you all throw out ideas. People that use Mac. Oh man, that's a low level error. Wrong number of arguments given. And it's not coming from, it's not nothing that um, this is doing. It's just when it's trying to install something with brew. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
All right, well, let's do some debugging here. I'm not going to take all day with this, but maybe we can get this figured out quickly. Or I can do a brew upgrade. Let's just try a couple things. Yeah, brew normally is very solid for me. Hey, I'll try brew install auto make uh, directly. That's a good idea, Kevin. Once I'm done with this upgrade thing. So I love it. Everything goes super smoothly until you, uh, until you actually need to use my my Mac computer to do the final compiling step. All right. By the way, people while we're waiting here, people that um, came to SymphonyCon last week, what was your favorite talk? And you don't have to say it was Kevin's talk just because he's here. Okay, so that's already there. Brew clean up. Hmm. <laughs> All right, man. I'd hate to be dead in the water from just this. We were having so much success. Let's try something, see if we can find this exact thing. Come on, there we go. Mm-hmm, <laughs> ah, this is not like super promising. Your Blackfire brew install is broken. I was wondering if that was Blackfire as well. Do you think this is coming from Blackfire? Oh, it totally is, let's just get rid of that then. Thank you for catching that. Um, let's see, brew uninstall, I think. And that is called, uh, um, it's called Blackfire. Okay, let's get rid of, I can always reinstall these, they're not working. Brew uninstall, I think. And the other one is, let's grab this one too. Oops, come on, Ryan. Cool. Desire to move them manually. Let's just see if that's enough. So let's see here. Using a script from Doc on Linux, throws errors anyway. Looking forward to make it works. On Linux, you must use a Docker image. Oh man, this is good nerdery. All right, that is still there. So let's remove some things manually. Just fine, because I can install this stuff later. Uh, do I need to untap that? Never had to untap something before. Ooh, that's looking promising. Okay, let's go back to our, let's get some stuff done now. So I'm gonna go back here to my embed. That was, I just, I, I did, sorry, I did that really quickly, but that was just, I went back to running the command from the documentation. So we're back to this command right here. This is looking more promising. I'm a, I'm a sucker for the ASCII art, I gotta be honest. I love that. Ooh, okay, source zlib not downloaded or not locked. You should download it first. So enough image your dependencies, PDO, SQL, that's fine. Is that a brew? Do I need to do that manually or? Um... Oh, let's try it. And this is what I would do if I didn't have, uh, you know, Kevin here who is the creator of this. And again, what we're, we're running into now is, you know, just the annoying specific things to different machines. I don't know if like what the issue I'm getting here is uh, gonna be common for Mac or if it's just some random thing. Yeah, 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 you say, yeah, I see why the Docker build is the recommended one, absolutely. You know, 
when it comes to like this level of build tools, yeah, relying on my machine to do that is not that great. <laughs> it's because of the previous broken installation. So what should we do, Kevin? So is it because we got like halfway through? Oh, okay. Ah, okay. So, th so that's actually interesting. So this is a cool thing to see here. So we... Awesome. Okay, so um, maybe, Kevin, you can answer that. What is that disk directory? That's something that has already been... Uh, is, that, is that like what we're building? Was that already there? Like, I'm going to delete that because you told me to. This is a good opportunity to say, like, you know, is this is this the thing we're building? So did they get half built and now I'm undoing it? This is a fun thing for me to try out, especially with a helper here. Because uh, this stuff is way over my head. I, I'm into, you know, I, I use PHP. I love front end stuff. But as far as compiling stuff goes, um, this is just like... You know, this is this is t like tough stuff for me to actually debug. I don't know. I got the Zlib thing again, so this might be I might be in trouble here. All right. So about that disk directory. So it's what we use to create a static version of PHP and all its extensions and dependencies. So I probably have that disk thing again. Cool. But if I don't have that, let's see, I had to have that. Just did that a second ago. Um, <laughs> Zlip. Okay. So Kevin says we'll try to remove the PHP extensions, which is fine with me. I want to get things working little by little. All right. And I maybe needed to remove my disk directory, but we'll see. Cool, so fetching a bunch of cool stuff. All right, so let's see Kevin here. So previously the package config website was down. The main issue with the static PHP CLI tool is that it must download the sources of all the dependencies. And if the website is down, that doesn't work. So that could be the problem, or it could be, again, something specific to my machine. So question, will this static file contain Franken PHP inside? Kevin can answer that better than I can, but my impression is, yeah, it's going to have um, Franken PHP, which is really um, the Caddy web server. Um, so it's going to have PHP inside. It's going to have Caddy web server inside. Franken PHP is the, from my understanding, is basically the glue between um, kind of Caddy and like the PHP executable. These are things I'd probably know better if I didn't have to leave the middle of his talk. But look at this. It's working now. Yes. This takes me back to my uh, my days in college, trying to, for some reason, uh, set up a Gentoo installation and compiling things for 24 straight hours. Cool. Kevin's going to give us a play-by-play -play of what's happening right now, which is awesome because to me this is this is really cool, but it's also... Black magic, which in part is fine because I mean we're compiling things all together. This is exactly what I want a tool like Frank and PHP to handle for me. So let's see here. One, building a static version of libphp using static PHP CLI. Two, building Frank and PHP with that libphp embedded and your app embedded. Cool. Because that's the idea with Frank and PHP. So we're we're I realize I'm kind of doing things backwards in a sense. So Franken PHP is cool on its own, and I'm using Franken PHP in a more interesting, more complex way. So Franken PHP by itself is going to be something that we get Franken PHP and our Symphony app all combined into one, so that we can ship that off to production. Now, 
we'll see how long this takes. Kevin, how long does this take? I have no idea. Did I sign us all up for watching compile things for 30 minutes? This is what happens when I do something totally new. Okay, here we go. The first build is very slow because you need to build all the dependencies of PHP, all the dependency expansions, all the extensions, and then PHP. Oh, then it's cache and will be faster. So that reminds me of, yeah, like a, that reminds me, I'm, I'm guessing the tech is different, but that reminds me of um, like Docker files, right? You know, they're slow the first time. You build it, get in the cache, then you're good. Then it's cached and will be faster, almost instant. That is awesome. Because I was looking at this being like, okay, so if I need to rebuild this every time I make a change to my app, we need to set aside some time for that. But the fact that this apparently is going to be nearly instant is awesome. Ah, if you need a, if you need a filler, I'm interested in what's good about Turbo since I know nothing about it. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing, the biggest thing with Turbo is, and I want, I want everyone to watch this tutorial that we're building. You've probably heard me. If you're here, you've heard me talk about this for the past month, but it's this last stack tutorial. It's free till January 15th. Um, please go through it. Um, but on a high level, uh, you know, Turbo, Turbo, the easiest way to explain Turbo and, and really, really doesn't capture it. You know, Turbo has, so Turbo came from a library called Turbo Links, which existed for 10 years, I think 11 years, I looked it up. And what that, what Turbo Links did was it made all of your link clicks into Ajax calls. I broke my app, there we go. And that was it. So that was really cool, but not that cool. So you can see this here, when I click these links, there's no full page refresh. It's just making an Ajax call in the background and it's reloading the page and it makes things feel really fast. Um, it's still grabbing the full HTML from your site, but it feels really fast because you, your browser doesn't need to re-parse the CSS or re-execute your JavaScript. It's just replacing the HTML on the page. So that was what Turbo was for a long time. Um, and that was cool. And, 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 you know, really, you know, my goal with Symfony is to give, on the front end, to give us two paths that are both equally great paths. So there's the path of, I want to build a front end, I want to build my front end with a front end framework like Svelte or React or Next.js. And I want to use, so Symfony is going to be an API. So um, I really like that path right now because what we can say is use API platform because it's amazing. And then on the front end, you can just use their tools. So um, I wouldn't tell people to use Webpack Encore at this point uh, if they were building a single page application in Next.js or React. I'd say, go use their tools, go use their ecosystem, scaffold their stuff, good to go. But on the other side, um, I want, if you want, if, if you want to build an application that returns, that uses Twig templates and returns HTML, I want you to be able to build as rich of an experience. I don't want there to be this feeling of, well, we really need this app to have a good user interface and to be interactive. So we have to use Vue. I'm like, no, 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 that's not true. That, that is total garbage. You can build a very, very, very interactive, beautiful, um, interface using twig templates and returning HTML from your server. And the first step to doing that is you've got to get rid of full, get rid of those full page refreshes. Okay, just checking on that. And that's the first thing that Turbo does. Um, the other parts of Turbo, the things we're going to talk about in the tutorial, this is where we're going to get reusable patterns for doing things like modals. So I want to be able to uh, click a add new product link and have that open a form in the modal, be able to submit the form right in the modal, be able to have the modal close. I want toast notifications to come up. I want to be able to build rich data tables. Um, and I'm going to do this all with Symfony and Twig. And so the this is no longer a short answer. But the short answer is that that's what Turbo does. And with Turbo Drive, Turbo Frames, and Turbo Streams, those are the three parts of Turbo. You mix those things together in the right way and you use the the correct patterns, you're gonna be able to create things that are really, really awesome. So that's the whole goal of that last stack tutorial is less about teaching and more about challenges, really. 
like how would I create a really killer modal system using this technology? How would I create a really killer toast notification data tables? Um, I want to create a site that's really, really awesome. Let's figure out how to do it with those tools and have reusable patterns. Ooh. All right, so let's see here. So go, 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 go. This does not look like a success message though. So let's see here. So I have package net slash net IP is not in go root. I'm looking at you, Kevin. I bet you know what that is. Because I don't know what that is. My go is bad. So we'll see if Kevin can help us here. I'm being lazy. I would normally. Oh, and I have another one here. Crypto slash. Oh, it seems like my screen froze. The terminal I am seeing. Okay, it's not showing anything new. Okay, hold on. Let's let's check this out. Come on, streaming software. Do you see me? Hey. Let me know. You you're all a few seconds delayed too. Wait, wait, wait. Let me go back here. Oh yeah, weird. No, okay, I can totally. What happened there? Man, I got build errors. I got Mac errors. So I, yeah, I can see the same thing that you are all seeing. So if I go to myself, I can see me. But if I go to any other screen, then okay. Let me sources. We don't want that. Scenes, share screen. <laughs> oh man, technical difficulties. Yeah, so my basically my streaming software is now stuck. I can see me, but it doesn't want to share anything else. Let me stop. I'm going to stop real quick and then restart, so bear with me. That probably didn't work. Come on, guys. Yeah, I know, screen's frozen. It's never happened before. All right. I feel like we're so close to having this work. So real quick, let me do. do, do, do. By the way, was that too long? Darn it. All right. Give me one second, see if I can figure this out. Otherwise, we might be dead, which is kind of fine. I don't want to, I don't, my first stream went two and a half hours, and I don't want these things to go super long. I do want to get this actually working, but if I need to, then we, we can stop and start this next time when my machine is behaving better. Mm -mm. All right, one second. I'll be right back. Huh? Let's see if that's better. Hey, hey. This is what I get, you know? Third time streaming. Appreciate everyone actually having patience with me. I don't know what happened there. So I use OBS and it just crashed and came back. So we can go from that less interesting technical problem. So hopefully now you can see what we have here. So it's, yeah, it's talking about Go missing two different packages in Go root. <laughs> Kevin's got home. And as a reminder, this is, uh, you know, we're using brand new stuff here. This is stuff that just came out within the past, uh, you know, week or so. So and that's part, as I mentioned, it's part of the reason I want to do this is just to see what works, what doesn't work. It's good feedback. My go is too old. Come on, Ryan. You know, you do this stream. I think I have it from Brew. No, how do I have go installed? Uh, that's a good question. Ryan, how did you install go? Install Go. I don't remember when I installed Go. 
probably a long time ago. So download on a Mac. Cool. Okay, yeah, so it just wants me to download this. It could be an Apple default something. Oh, brew is the best way. Okay. So apparently at some point I, I installed it without. So that's what I wanted to use anyway. I've probably done something in brew uh, or something in Go. Um, the Symphony binary is written in Go. And for a short time I had access to that. So I may have been messing around with that. All right, so let's do brew uh, Go version again. And let me, let me get a new tab here. There we go. Ha ha. And then let's do our, there we go. So I got my same embed command again. So what have we learned today? We've learned um, to make sure that you don't try to do a live stream with an ancient version of Go when you're using Go compiling. So this is now looking good. Okay, awesome. So now we're, we're back to the, ooh, here we go. Uh, 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 so we have, you see this, Kevin? So we have warning object files. We have, for example, libzip was built for newer Mac OS version than being linked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did learn. We did learn that yaks need a lot of shaving. Oh, don't mind the warnings. There we go. This is this is what new software lo looks like. Okay, hold on. Uh, okay, so so where where did the warnings end? Did we so okay okay okay. So this actually worked. Don't mind the warnings. We might want you know a little like green check mark at the bottom. It's like Ryan, you did it, buddy. Don't doubt yourself, Ryan. You got this. All right. So now using the binary. Okay, cool. So dot slash my app. So this apparently created a my app file. Is that right here? Where is my app? Or is that in the disk directory? So here's a question. Yeah, so where 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 did this create that? So I have dot, dot slash my app here, but the my app file contains your self contained app. And let's see. I don't have a my app, do I? Unless I'm crazy? No. And it's not over here. Kevin's going to help me. That's dist. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That's what I was wondering. I was like, it seems like it's going to be the dist. So, so basically, my my app here is going to be dist. Franken PHP Mac ARM64 because I built for Mac. PHP dash server. Okay, my app is only created with the Linux commands. I need to improve that. That's good, man. You're doing, you're doing great, uh, Kevin. You, you basically had two light documentation things that could be improved, and then you had to help Ryan debug his ancient Go thing. This looks good. I, I'm getting happy feelings from this. So let's see here. So it's listening on port 80. So is this just up on port 80 in my machine? Yeah, yeah, port eighty. Cool. Let's let's try this. Oh, did it freeze again? Dang it! All right, I gotta figure that out. I actually upgraded my uh, my OBS right before I did um, right before I started streaming. All right. So there we go. So now, so you you, you we we missed the fireworks part here. It was, it was really exciting. So ultimately, what it built was this dist slash Franken PHP Mac ARM64. So following the documentation, it's like, okay, run PHP dash server. That's going to spin things up. That's what I did. So I think I am now listening on port 80, caddy server PHP app on 80. I don't know. So let's see what happens here. Uh, so it's port 80. So I want just localhost, right? Ah, it works. Oh my goodness, it works. That is sweet. And yeah, awesome. And so you can see Turbo's working. Um, 
I don't have my normal debugging thing down here because we're in production mode of stimulus. Uh, so yeah, I think we did it. I think we did it. That was awesome. Now we're, now we're just seeing uh, my deprecated uh, code here <laughs> so that it's spinning out from my application. All right, so try to add at dash dash domain localhost. Let's do that. Uh, because what I'm passing in here, Kevin, are flags that go into, are, are Frank and PHP flags, right? Which I think are also caddy flags, or or is is Frank and PHP a big enough wrapper around caddy that I'm not passing caddy specific flags here, but I'm passing Frank and PHP flags. Hey, Timo. Ooh, and that wants my password, which I totally typed in wrong. Come on. Cool. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So now we have, um, we're running on 443. So now, look at that. The, little, the, the difference there was the lock icon. I was wondering about that poor 80. So we are actually running on HTTPS right now, which is awesome. Yeah. All right, cool. So I think that's mission accomplished. Okay, cool, yeah, so I'm gonna actually, oh yeah, I didn't even think about that, running, running the console. So I'm going to, well, we'll close that because that's so fast to start. So let's run this again. But what I wanna do this time, what was it? Uh, PHP-CLI, okay, so that makes sense. So we have PHP-Server and we have PHP-CLI to get into it. And then bin console. Ah, oh, that is awesome. So I can still run things uh, via bin console. And yeah, that is awesome. I think I'm happy. Does anybody else want any other questions? Anyone want to see anything? This was my goal for today. And I was hoping it wouldn't take two and a half hours. And it took under an hour despite all the issues. So PHP server is a Franken PHP specific command that mimics options of the file server command of caddy. Cool, yeah. So yeah, you can. That's what I thought. You can use all of the caddy commands. So, um, so what I'm passing in when I run this executable like PHP CLI, these are. This one in particular is a Franken PHP command, but I can also do other things that are actually caddy specific things. And that's one of the things I like about Frank and PHP is, um, I mean, I'm still learning caddy, but the fact that it's the light layer around a really well-known uh, production web server. And so it's doing all the heavy lifting and I can pass options specific to it is um, just really, really important to me. And I'm hoping it would be really cool. Um, I, I can't do this work because I just don't know anything about this. Um, but it'd be really cool. and in, in, in to have Frank and PHP inside of the Symphony CLI. Um, this is something that I think we want in theory. Kevin probably knows about it more than I do, but it'd be really great when I'm running Symphony Serve that was actually using Frank and PHP internally because what's cool about that is that if I'm using the Symphony binary locally um, and it's using Frank and PHP, then if I deploy my app with Frank and PHP, then I have that same kind of stack from end to end. It's not. It's no longer this situation where I have a one local web server with the Symphony binary, and then when I go to production, I have something totally different. Um, it'd be really cool to have the same thing all the way across. All right, let's see what I missed here. Bop, 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 bop. All right, so is it possible to update the embedded caddy file? Um, good question. So caddy file is the configuration file for the caddy web server. And the answer is, I lost it. Not yet, there is now embedded caddy file actually. Um, Tarmo said, if some application uses the PDO SQLite, where is that database file stored on that computer where it's run? That's a great question. Um, that's a great question. Kevin, did you answer that? I'm looking right here. Because if you have a standalone binary then yeah, if, if I'm in my app and I'm writing writing anywhere, even, even from inside of our app, let's say I'm writing into my var directory, where is that actually physically going? And Mercury is available out of the box. I think this is a really important thing. Um, Mercury is just such a great technology 
And what I don't want, what, what I would like to see eliminated is the idea that, you know, people don't use Mercure because they need to get it set up. And, and they, you know, then they say, yeah, it's, a, it's another thing we need to set up on production. So let's not bother using it. So, you know, I, I'm hoping that if we start using Frank and PHP more as a community, that's, that's going to be a really great thing because we can make Mercure more of a first class citizen and, um, and assume in more cases that, hey, you have Mercure. So by the way, you can also do this really cool thing. Mercure and Turbo go together really well. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Kevin, what was the answer to, um, oh yeah, Mercury with live components. This is a uh, question we get from time to time. And before yesterday, I was thinking, yeah, that's something we should allow you to do at some point. We should allow you to have a live component and somehow return a stream response. But since yesterday, I realized we can already use live components and turbo streams together. If you're building your component, um, pretend this is a component controller right here. Pretend I'm building a component. If I paste in a turbo stream into my component, you know, then the next time it re-renders, it's gonna work. So for example, if you, if you triggered a live action from your live component, you could set a flag in that live action that says something like saved equals true. I don't know, something like that. And then in your your template, you would basically say if if saved, then uh, render this turbo stream to update something outside of your element. So this new knowledge of turbo streams is um, something that is makes it immediately usable instead of live components, which is really cool. Ah, did my screen freeze again. That's all right, because I'm about to finish here. Uh, Kevin, the last question I may have missed it. Sorry. Um, that someone asked and I was curious about is if I'm right is is if you're using the SQLite database or if from my application I am writing to the var directory for example where does that go because I have just that single file so you know normally I would have an actual var directory but there is no var directory so what happens there I like how I'm the one hosting this um, live coding and it's become, uh, I, I should have just gotten Kevin on here with me. Good question, check out the logs. Um, wait, is that a challenge? Should I check out the logs? Are you saying, are you saying you, you're not sure and we should look at the logs? Cause I'm not actually, well, let's, let's try it. Uh, 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 there we go, domain localhost. You'll see the direct, oh, I see. You'll see the directory where the embedded app is copied when the binary starts. Oh, there's the key right there. Yeah, so it's actually copied to a temp directory. Okay, so yeah, so it's, it's um, let's, oh man, let's look in there. This is cool. See, we're discovering things. There we go. So this is actually apparently where that thing is open to. So if we wrote something, yeah, it would go right into this var directory. Cool, mystery solved. So it's a standalone, okay, that's really, that makes a lot of sense. So we've we've packaged everything up into one, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to, when it executes, that it needs to be all together. When it executes, it behaves a bit more like a traditional app where your code lives in one spot and that code is being served through a Symfony server. Oh yeah, sorry, I know, I'm frozen. I've got to figure that out. Let me go back to me. All right, so my screen is frozen. We accomplished our mission. Um, I'm going to stop right here. It was a little bit over an hour, so thank you for joining. Sorry about the technical difficulties. It's my third time, uh, so I will debug the OBS stuff. Um, if you like this, I enjoy doing this. It was really cool. I mean, this is amazing. I, I just, thanks to Kevin being here, this is probably three hours of work squeezed into 45 minutes and hopefully everyone else learned um, as much as I did. So if there's other stuff you want to see me try out, let me know. I might try to do this every Wednesday. We'll see. And thanks for everyone joining. And if you have any questions or anything, let me know. And um, happy coding. I'll see you all soon. All right, bye.